It's no secret that the world is in a bad place right now. It has been for a long period, but with the population growth and the increased carbon emission, we might be facing an unpredictable future as a species. But climate change and the impacts that it has on Earth and the humankind are not news to us. We've known for some time now that we have to do something if we want to prolong our livelihood on this planet at least until life on other planets is made possible, if that actually is an option at all in the future. As a species, it's in our nature to think that we always have more time and that somebody else is probably working on a solution. We always try to leave the responsibility to somebody else and we often think that our sole actions won't make a big difference in the world. We also think that if we just planted a bunch of trees, it would be enough to save the planet from the dangerous consequences that climate change brings. But it's not. So let's dive further into why planting trees can no longer save our atmosphere on its own. First, let's talk about what climate change actually is. The changes in the patterns of the weather, the oceans, land surfaces, and ice sheets that occur over a long period is known as climate change. Usually the changes are observed over a period that is at least 30 years long before conclusions about climate change are made. The temperature, wind, humidity, rainfall, and more are all in the scope of the weather. The weather is affected by all the other elements such as the ice sheets, the land surfaces, and the oceans. All of these together form something that's called a climate system. The climate, on the other hand, is merely a statistical description of the current state of this so-called climate system. In these statistical descriptions, there is much information about averages, variability, and extremes that might be caused due to natural processes or as a result of our influence. For example, a natural process that influences the climate is the radiation from the sun or the volcanoes. Human influence causes changes in the structure of the atmosphere. Most of the scientists that are working in this area agree that the biggest part of the climate change that's happening is because of the well-known greenhouse effect. For those of you who don't know, the greenhouse effect is a process that occurs naturally and that is responsible for the warming up of the Earth. This greenhouse effect is one of the most important things because it's accountable for the livable temperatures we have that provide us with a habitable environment. When the energy that is emitted from the sun reaches the atmosphere of the Earth, a part of it is reflected back to space and the other part is absorbed into the Earth's atmosphere. According to NASA, the part that is immediately reflected back out to space accounts for about 30% of the radiation emitted from the sun. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane, ozone, and other gases are included in the greenhouse effect. The part of the energy that is absorbed in the atmosphere, or the other 70% of the radiation emitted from the sun, serves a great purpose and warms the surface of the earth, making it livable for us. The oceans and the land absorb this radiation, and as they get heated, they start to release heat, which again is returned to space. This greenhouse effect keeps the temperature around 33 degrees Celsius higher than it would have been without it, which is why life on Earth is even possible. The average temperature of the Earth is around 15 degrees Celsius. Imagine places that have an average temperature of negative 20 degrees Celsius, they would have a negative 53 degree temperature. The normal average summer would have been with temperatures around zero. Makes you appreciate the greenhouse effect a lot more, doesn't it? The other planets in the solar system have either very cold freezing temperatures or extremely hot ones where humans wouldn't be able to sustain for a minute. Our atmosphere acts like a cloak and makes our planet a great place to be. Without our cloak, the Earth would have been either flaming hot like Venus, around 462 degrees Celsius or 864 degrees Fahrenheit, or freezing as the moon at around negative 153 degrees Celsius or negative 243 degrees Fahrenheit. We as humans contribute to this greenhouse effect largely. More than 90% of the scientists from all over the world agree that the evidence that points to humans being contributors to climate change is real. Moreover, not only are we contributors, we are basically the main cause that worsens the situation more and more. We're burning large quantities of fossil fuels and cutting down trees that help a lot with absorbing the carbon dioxide. With these actions, we're just sending heat-trapping gases into the atmosphere. It's just like the link between smoking and cancer. This debate was settled back in the 1960s when the scientists agreed after more than half a decade of research that the link existed. It's the same with our behavior and the behavior of the climate. Statistically, scientists are even more confident that humans cause a big portion of the climate change than they are confident that smoking causes cancer. So what evidence do scientists base this conclusion on? There are many pieces of evidence, such as 
simple chemistry, meaning that we burn carbon-based materials and we emit more and more constantly, measuring CO2 in the atmosphere and coming to the conclusion that it's increased and that the levels are higher than the last hundreds of thousands of years. Chemical analysis that proves that the increase in the atmospheric CO2 is coming from humans burning fossil fuels. Constant monitoring of the climate conditions to connect the recent increasing of the Earth's temperature to the increased CO2 emissions. The potential threat of the reckless human behavior was first broadcasted around 30 years ago. Prior to that, for almost a century, scientists accumulated evidence that the emissions from burning fossil fuels are what influences the climate so severely. One remarkable article in 1956 in the New York Times was one of the first ones that explained how the emissions from the human race influenced climate change and how it would lead to extreme environmental changes. Later in 1988, after the greenhouse effect was already broadcast, and pushed into the spotlight, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was established. The panel is functional even today, and it's an intergovernmental body that is devoted to defining objectives and scientific views of the climate change, along with the impact it has on the political and economic level. When it comes to what we can do to avoid making the situation even worse than it is already, planting trees won't be nearly enough. If you're wondering why, let us explain. If we take a step back in time and analyze what the CO2 emissions were in the past compared to the last decades, we'll notice a huge increase. Scientists can analyze the past levels of CO2 emissions by using the ancient air bubbles that are trapped in ice. According to those bubbles, the CO2 levels in the atmosphere now are higher than any given moment in the last 400,000 years. These carbon dioxide levels always fluctuated. During the ice ages, the levels were somewhere around 200 parts per million and during the hot periods around 280 parts per million. So increase and decrease in the CO2 levels are usual for the atmosphere. But in 2013, the CO2 levels were above 400 parts per million, which was a first in recorded history. These increases in CO2 levels have catastrophic consequences to the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, if we keep burning fossil fuels at the same quantities as we do now over the next few centuries, the CO2 levels will just keep on increasing until they reach dangerous levels of 1,500 parts per million. After these numbers, the atmosphere would not be able to go back to lower levels for tens of thousands of years. Trees are a huge help in lowering CO2 levels in the atmosphere because they absorb carbon dioxide for growth while releasing oxygen. But if we get into numbers, the reality states that it might already be too late to put all our hope into planting more trees. By this point, we have done so much damage that there is literally not enough space on Earth to plant as many trees as we need to clear out the high levels of CO2 emissions to prevent increasing the average temperatures of the Earth by 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If the average temperature rose, the results would be devastating. This would result in a lot more wildfires throughout the planet extreme droughts, and wild storms. If we tried to stop this increase in the temperature solely based on planting trees, we would have to plant 1.7 billion acres of trees. This would result in removing around 3 billion tons of atmospheric carbon each year. The problem is that this number is just 10% of the amount of carbon that we emit annually. So planting those 1.7 billion acres of trees would not heal our atmosphere, but it would help out to some extent. But there is another problem connected to this. 1.7 billion acres is a huge surface. It's actually the size of the contiguous U.S. A lot of the land is used to raise crops, and the surfaces needed for planting food are increasing as the population is multiplying. The earth has a limited space, and if we tried to plant that many trees, then we would have to not plant food. So what do we do other than planting as many trees as we possibly can while preserving the ones that are already here? We have to do much more if we want to improve our situation and provide a brighter future for our next generations. We have to recycle and reuse products and packaging. By recycling, we can reduce 2,400 pounds of carbon dioxide annually. Another thing we have to pay attention to is how much we drive our cars. Accepting different transports, such as biking or public transport, is a great way to lower emissions. Replace the regular light bulbs with compact fluorescent light, CFL bulbs. They last way longer and are more environmentally friendly. Also, turn off everything that you're not using. Saving electricity is a great way to contribute towards lowering gases. We don't have a spare planet, so we have to be really careful with our actions. We all make a difference even if it feels like what you're doing as an individual has no impact on the world. If we do these things and we teach our kids to do them as well, we might prolong the existence of the human race. 
If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comment section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.